I am Francesco Vollero. I am working for Red Hat in Italy. And I have a past as a software engineer. And I moved to the dark side. I moved to sales. Yeah, I know. But um, why uh, I'm giving this talk is because there is not that much awareness about how to develop applications with OpenStack SDK. While I'm traveling to meet customers, I notice every time that they don't have a clue on how to develop applications. So I thought it's best to start from, let's say, from scratch or for the bottom, so with the developers, and grow the awareness from the developers bottom up. So what we are going to talk about today is what is OpenStack? Just one slide. Uh, how we, let's say, interact with OpenStack. Another slide. API for the OpenStack. So not that much rubbish or technicality. What is the CLI? And at the end, we're just going to speak about briefly SDK, which kind of SDK you have that is the native Python client as well as the, let's say, latest and greatest that is called OpenStack SDK. Plus, we're going to have a very little demo, easy, and probably going to fail since the god demons. Plus, conclusion, and if we still have time and we are not hungry enough, we can have uh, a quick question and answer. What is OpenStack? OpenStack is one of the biggest open source projects that we have since Linux kernel. When I say about, uh, I, when I talk about biggest, I mean with the biggest amount of contribution from different companies. We had companies like Microsoft contributing to open source project that a few years ago was impossible, or you cannot imagine the both worlds. And now you see people in Microsoft wearing t-shirt, we love Linux. It's something that happened from time to time. To give you a very easy understanding or a one-on-one representation of what it is, OpenStack, it's like AWS, but in the open source source. It means that you want to see the bugs that you, are, uh, that you get affected, while on AWS, it's invisible for you. How we communicate with the OpenStack, just one thing, API. So everything is wrapped up through API. You can, uh, you can have a CLI that has some REST client, and you can have a web UI that is actually doing REST calls. Let's, let's understand a bit more. Uh, it's a REST. Uh, we say that it's API, but it's a REST with the REST paradigm. And it's working on HTTP and HTTPS, of course. And it's using um, the HTTP verbs to uh, declare the actions, get, post, put, easy, standard procedures. Plus, um, as it, it works for HTTP, on a request, you're going to get a response with the content that you ask for. Seems nice, seems easy, so we can wrap it up with curl, and we don't need to have a CLI. It's done. Well, let's give a quick look. So we, are, we want to reboot a virtual machine or instance, also called a server in this case. So what we need to give is a an URL, and we can see it. And we need to pass some header, because you need to authenticate yourself. The, and the credential in this case is uh, this token. Plus, you need to send a request. How are you going to send a request? With JSON. That is the life motive of these last 10 years. And what you say is just say, declare the action that is reboot, and which kind or which type of reboot, R reboot or soft reboot. In the OpenStack world, there is a difference between those two, because the soft one is like the ACPI. So you are in your laptop, press the button, and you get to reboot. While the hard one is unplug and reconnect the cable, basically. So I would say it's the rough one. So what we are going to do with curl is just giving the URL that I described above, <clears throat> 
and give the action that is opposed, because it's an action that needs to be done. So you don't, you are not getting, you are sending. The, the token as before, it was too long, and I get it up. And, and actually, even wrong. And uh, you give the data that you need to send, but it's a bit weak. Why? This approach can work once, it can work twice. But if you need to do something serious, or OK, not just one per month, but you need to do something on a daily basis. It's too hard, I guess, to learn fastly, because you need to debug and read the code and read the manual over and over and over again to have an idea of what is the action that you need to do and how you need to do it. I guess it's just kind of reinventing the wheel, because as I said before, we have a command line interface. What is doing this command line interface? It's actually wrapping up all the actions that are provided, and it just gives you the ability to run the command with the action that you want, plus just look at the output that's going to be human readable and not some JSON that you need to parse later. For example, if you want to reboot as before, uh, the command that we need to run is going to be just Nova, that is the client for the, that is managing the virtual machine, uh, reboot, that is the action, the standard, that could be hard, uh, sorry, the standard is the soft one, and if you give a flag hard, it's going to be unplug and replug the cable and the instance name. Fairly easy. What is happening here is exactly what I showed you before, not changing a single bit. You can, you can see and double check if you don't trust me, when you're going to have your over stack, you just have to run here verbose or the bug, and you're going to see the whole action. Actually, it's with pi curl, so fairly easy. The web UI doesn't make that much sense because it's working the same way as the client, so it's doesn't, it doesn't have a meaning to explain it here. But what you have a meaning, it's discussing about the SDK, that is the fulcrum of the topic. So what's one of the, the advantages of using uh, SDK is that what we are going to do is using our own language that we want, Python, Ruby, Java, Cobol, Go, whatever, and we have in an objective-oriented language, we are going to have an object that is taking care of all those actions. So server reboot, server create, server destroy, everything is going to be done with the language we are more comfortable with. So one of the most amazing stuff, just import the library that you want, just say, provide me with a virtual machine, Give me the server ID, because I want to know the name or the UUID, and reboot the machine. Advantages, again, are that if you need to wrap up your uh, command line interface in bash script, or running with popen to expect some kind of output, or parsing it, it's just doubling your, uh, your effort to having something workable. From my perspective, if I can have an advantage to have a system that univocally help me to um, call a method or call an action, I prefer that more than going crazy with bash or popen. And most importantly, it's, uh, it's the language I'm used to work with. So I feel home. Here we have the differences or an, let's say a high level overview with the differences between API, SDK, and CLI interface. While the ease of use, we have the CLI, after we have the SDK, and after we have straight API. Why? Because it's all wrapped up. So the degrees of freedom are sadly the opposite, because the API gives you all the freedom that you want, but it comes at a cost that you have to somehow work with them. But if there is the SDK, that is something that someone already worked with, and glue all the different actions for you, that's going to be, let's say, straightforward. While the CLI is just specific commands that you want. SDK ecosystem, for example, for the OpenStack, that is what I'm talking about now, are different libraries for Python, 
for obvious reason, since the OpenStack is all wrote in uh, in Python, the, let's say the modules, and uh, the web UI is wrote in Django and JavaScript. So let's say that it's all Python. So we have different libraries. Uh, one is the OpenStack native clients, that it was the first that come up, because you know. One of the first things is to have a command line interface where you can execute a command without sending REST commands from a way to another. So it was, uh, let's say, the first. After it came up, just recently in Kilo, uh, the Python OpenStack SDK. That is the, let's say, latest and greatest with uh, a good amount of bugs, since it's not mature enough. Plus, we have Pyrax, that is the Python library wrote by Rackspace for their public cloud. And Rackspace as public cloud is using OpenStack, so let's say that it's almost one-to-one, -one interoperability. And later we have libcloud, that is more generic. And uh, so you can speak with AWS, you can speak with OpenStack, you can speak with VMware, and you can speak with uh, Ovirt. There is a fair amount of libraries and a fair amount of effort to have these things automatized as much as possible. And later, there is a shade library that is, let's say, a condensed version of the OpenStack SDK, but it's going in a different direction because it's not, it's used just for uh, specific jobs. Ruby, if someone is interested, they have two libraries, Fog, that is the one that works better, or it's uh, mostly used, and Aviator, that is, uh, so how it's working the same way, but it doesn't have a very uh, group of people that contribute. And later on, uh, we have Java with an Apache project called JClouds and OpenStack 4J. Interested in some other languages? That's why we have other languages as well. For the latest and greatest, we have Keystone and Swift libraries wrote in C, and Erlang, if someone is using it or Go, that actually it's one of the libraries that is getting more, uh, more mature. Let's start, uh, let's start talking about the native Python clients. I know, it's full of text, but it's all important and precious information. One of the catch is that every, um, every object and all the structure of the code is different from a library to another. So if you want to speak, for example, with Nova, that is the library that is managing the instances itself, you have you have a very different structure compared to Neutron or compared to Keystone. So I would say that is uh, a bit dispersed. While, uh, for example, there are other, expl uh, the other examples that I'm going to show it later, where you're going to see that uh, it's more, let's say, human understandable. So, <clears throat> for example, using IPython, easy. I guess everyone knows about that, but there are still people that don't use IPython for some reason. So here is how you install it. It's just a REPL, so nothing, nothing fancy. But if you want, for example, to create a session with Nova, and this is important to see all this code here, as you can see, we are importing three different libraries. That is one, to create the virtual machine, or, or let's say discuss with the provider that is installing the virtual machine, or running the virtual machine, sorry. Uh, we have one that is the component that is using the networking, or it's creating, let's say, the networking. And one is the component that is managing the authentication. First of all, we need to authorize ourselves. We need to give our credentials. And after, we are going to shuffle our credential about, uh, around the Nova client to create a new virtual machine and the Neutron client to create networks. Seems straightforward. If you think that in here, there are going to be at least five or six different uh, API calls. And here it's solved in three different lines. What's, uh, what's one of the catches of these libraries is that to remember all the objects that you are accessing, you 
If it's the beginning, you need to play with IPython quite thoroughly, mostly with the, with the tab key, because it's impossible to remember all of them. So this is an example of pressing tab and all the different, let's say, methods that we have. So it's very purpose, I would say. I mean, it's not that nice, even though it's uh, human understandable, because you see, oh, there is an availability zone. Oh, there is a DNS domain. So I understand what it is. So it's way better than, a, than just call straight API for yourself or reinventing the wheel. If we want, for example, to ask for the list of the servers, we just say Nova Client Server List. And what he's doing is just fetching the list, making all the requests, using the token that we get before from Kisten, and returning a list. Uh, actually, it's an array with the, with the object server that contains the name of the servers that is running. Another example or another view is this one. So here, as well, we are running the list of the servers. And we start iterating with a 4. And if something happens, I do, for example, another output. It's uh, fairly trivial, but it's, uh, it's just the first thing it come up to my mind to make it simple. It's utterly complex to remember all the methods. And also, it's complex to debug when it happens, um, for example, that you confusing the objects, for example, from or the instruction from a, from a class to another. And it happens most of the times. So what's the solution for that? It's the Python OpenStack SDK. Why? Because it seems to me fairly uh, human to just have a connection, and from that connection, access all the different components. So for example, in this case, I'm asking the, to the compute, I'm asking the list of flavors, so that is the different sizes of the virtual machine. And as you can see, the only work I am doing is the, it's creating the connection. And after, let's say for free, I get the compute and the networking uh, component, as well as all the others. But it's still human and understandable and specific. So I know that what I am doing as action without remembering what is doing Neutron, what is doing Nova. Yeah, some conclusions. Of course, the, the SDK is easier than the API, but is uh, obviously a bit more complex than the CLI. But you are not using it on a daily basis, the SDK. You are using it in an application. So it's just a part of the scope here. And the Python clients, it's an amazing library. It's a bit confusing and dispersed, but it's still the, the rock solid one because it's the mostly tested and used while the OpenStack SDK is slowing, slowing, oh boy, slowing, getting better. As I said, since it's young, it's going to have few bugs, but they are solved uh, fairly easy. And that's about it. Nothing more, and no kids. Questions? Excellent. Are all ah. uh, OpenStack implementation the same? Yes, all the OpenStack implementation is the same because it's open source. So let's say that OpenStack itself, it's just one single thing. Everyone can do some coding. Let's say since it's Apache 2, they can write their own third party modules or third party integration. For example, uh, exists different uh, Swift storage, but sorry, not storage. Swift modules that are, for example, Ceph, that is created by Red Hat. It's an object storage, but it's not Swift, but it can behave like Swift. So there are, there are different parts, but OpenStack is one, basically. <laughs> Excellent. Toda, toda, raba.